Hi, this is question 4 from the AQA Mechanics 3 June 2011 exam paper. Um, in this question we're going to be looking at um, a question involving relative velocity. Now uh, we've got the um, unit vectors i, j and k that are directed east, north and vertically upwards. We've got a helicopter that's travelling in the direction of this vector here with constant speed 140 kilometers per hour and then we've also got a helicopter b that's traveling in a different direction that's given by this vector here with a constant speed of 60 kilometers per hour now the key thing to note here is that we're given the direction um, vectors and we're given a speed for each of helicopter a and helicopter b for part A, um, we're asked to find the velocity of A relative to B. Just going to give myself a little bit more room to work in here. So, for part A, now the first thing I need to know is a vector for the velocity of A, because I don't actually know that yet. I know the direction it's going in, and I know the speed that it's going in. So what I need to do first of all is I need to find a unit vector for the direction and then once I know what the unit vector for the direction is I can simply just multiply that by the speed and then that will give me the um, velocity of A, a vector for the velocity of A. So I'm, I'm going to write this as a column vector so the direction is negative 2, 3, six okay and I want this as a unit vector so I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of its magnitude so um, the magnitude of this vector is going to be so I'm going to times this by 1 over and it's going to be the square root of 4 plus 9 plus 36 okay so this will turn it into a unit vector I then need to times this by the speed so I'm going to multiply this by the speed okay and this will tell me what the um, velocity at A is going to be so that is going to be um, 13, so 1 over root 49, which is going to be a seventh. So we've got 140 divided by 7, which is 20. So that's going to make this 20 times. And that gives me negative 40. 60 and 120 okay so that's going to be the velocity of A I now need to know the velocity of B okay so um, I'm going to do a similar thing again um, I've got 2 negative 1 and 2 that's the direction I'm going to multiply by that by the reciprocal of its magnitude and this will turn it into a unit vector so that's going to be the square root of 4 plus 1 plus 4 2 squared plus 1 squared plus 2 squared and then I'm going to multiply that by the speed which is given as 60 okay so that tells me that this is going to be equal to and um, this is going to be root 9 which is 3 so we've got a third times 60 which is 20 and then I can multiply this by 20 and that's going to give me um, 40 negative 20 and 40 okay so um, so now we've got the velocity of A and B we need to find the velocity of A relative to B um, so I've got A relative to B um, so that's going to be equal to 
velocity of A take away the velocity of B and that's going to be negative 80 and um, so that's 60 take away so that's going to be 80 and we've got 120 take away 40 and that's also going to be 80 okay um, and there you go that's part A we've now got the uh, velocity of A relative to B okay moving on for part B let's have a little bit more room here okay um, initially the position vectors of A and B are given by this here so this time we've got a position vector for A and a position vector for um, B and we want to write down the position vector of A relative to B t hours after they leave their initial positions so we want our um, we want A relative to B so and um, that's going to be equal to uh, and we want the initial relative displacement so that's going to be this subtract this so we've got 4, negative 2, 3 where well, A was initially subtract negative 3, 6 and 3 um, so th this is where A was relative to B initially and then we want to add to that the relative velocity which we've worked out over here multiplied by time okay so that's going to make this uh, so we've got 7 take away 80t we've got negative uh, 8 plus 80t and 0 plus 80t so 80t and there you go uh, and that's part B Okay, uh, for part C, we want to find the distance between A and B when they are closest together. I'm just going to give myself a little bit more room to work in here. So what I'm going to do here um, is I'm going to start by writing down an equation um, for the distance between A and B. So I can use Pythagoras um, to say that S squared is going to be equal to this squared plus this squared plus this squared. Once I've done that, um, I'm going to um, differentiate this to find the rate of change of the distance between A and B. And um, I know that the rate of change of the distance between A and B at their closest point is going to be equal to zero. So I'm going to set this equal to zero to work out the time that... Um, the distance between A and B, sorry, the time of um, when they're closest together. And once I know this time, I can substitute that back in and actually work out the distance between A and B. So to start with, I'm going to say that S squared is going to be equal to, so that's the distance squared is going to be equal to each of these squared. 7 take away 80t squared plus negative 8 plus 80t squared plus and 80t squared I'm just going to expand that as 6400t squared ok so um, now rather than um, 
square root in both sides and working out what s is um, I want to know the rate of change of the distance but I'm going to work out the rate of change of the distance squared so I'm going to differentiate it as it is which means that I need to differentiate this side as well so if I differentiate this with respect to t um, this is going to become 2s and ds by dt and that's going to be equal to if I differentiate this I've got minus 160 7 take away 80 t plus and that's going to be 80 160 um, plus 80 t and this here is going to be 12,800 t okay so um, simplifying this um, and I'm just going to skip a couple of steps here um, and I'm going to say that well ds by dt is going to be equal to um, this here um, which is uh, 38,400 t take away 2,400 over 2 s okay and um, I know want this rate of change um, for when they're closest together to be equal to zero okay um, and that means that this part here would have to be equal to zero so I can say um, that in order for this to be equal to zero 38,400 T must be equal to 2,400 um, which means t is going to be equal to um, 24 over 384 uh, which is 0 0.065 seconds okay so I now know um, the time at which they were closest together so I now need to use this to work out um, the distance um, apart they were at this time so um, I can do this um, by putting t into this equation here so that tells me that s squared is going to be equal to and if I substitute t into here I'm going to get so that's going to be 2 squared plus and this here is going to be a negative 3 squared plus and into there I get 5 sorry that's um, 25 I beg your pardon ok so um, working that out then um, that's going to be equal to 3438 and um, so s squared is equal to 38 which means s is going to be equal to root 38 um, which is 6.16 kilometers which is three significant figures okay and there you go um, hopefully you found that useful um, I look forward to seeing you again soon take care